Hi, my name is Leo and I'll be following you during the Joan of Arc campaign, which starts in October 10th on Kickstarter. Uh, I'll be doing lives, so I hope to see you there. It's going to be a very exciting campaign uh, with plenty of pledges, uh, plenty of add-ons, and plenty of exciting surprises. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm going to be the voice in her head, that's Joan of Arc's head, during our Kickstarter that starts on the 10th of October. So if you've got any questions, any comments, I'll be in the comments, answering everything, writing the updates, keeping you informed as we go along. Hope to see you there. Last year we had a great campaign with lovely backers and we thought we did a really good job but we can always learn and we can always improve and we had loads of ideas we couldn't quite get everything implemented so this year we're back with a new better campaign with some really clever tricks you know some of them don't you what's your best what's your favorite trick we're doing this time that we wouldn't before well I think there's one thing that we could improve on, uh, it's late pledges. Last year we were not really sure whether we would have them or not and we finally had them. But this year we know upfront that we will have late pledges. But we really want to uh, thank our backers, the people who backed us during the campaign and not afterwards. So for this reason we will have something completely new called super exclusive. Now, super exclusive is different from a Kickstarter exclusive. Kickstarter exclusive, the late, black, late backers will have them, but super exclusive, they will not have them. Only the people who pledged for a core box will have them, and these are great minis. You will never find them again uh, in conventions or on retail, anything. The only way we will have them is for is to thank the people who backed them and uh, these will be two min miniatures actually i'm not sure we should call them miniatures because they're quite big so let's say two big models uh very very exciting ones and you will discover them soon well actually maybe we can say a little bit about those two super exclusive so what can you tell us about them jake well they sound like they're nonsense but they're really and really important. They're Gog and Magog, two giant brothers, and they're somewhere between two and three times the height of a man, so they're, they're big and imposing. And these are heralds of the beginnings of the very bad times in the Bible. So this gives you a hint about what perhaps may be coming down the line. One other thing I'd like to talk about that I think is pretty exciting is about what we're doing with the updates and how we're linking the stretch goals together in a way we didn't before. Now everybody likes a bit of background, a bit of story and to know what we're doing with the with the stretch goals and that's great but we thought well we can link the various different stretch goals together into not one or two but four different stories that all interweave and all belong in the world of Joan of Arc. So that's what we're doing now. We're getting that ready because it's quite complicated and we don't want to make a mistake during the Kickstarter when we're all busy. So we're getting this ready so that we can tell you some exciting stories as well as keeping you up to date with what's going on and how much we, we've got since we last spoke to you or how many backers have joined in and all the rest of the cool stuff. But we want to tell you stories and then each one will give you a hint about what's coming next and what, you, what exciting stuff is happening down the line so you're not always guessing. Sometimes you think you're going to know. It's a problem. It is a problem. Maybe you shouldn't hear some different oh, then Now we're good. Oh. 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 Well. Hello. Um, yeah, hello. Uh, we, were, we were just talking about expansions. Um, We've got lots of expansions, loads and loads of expansions. If you, the, the, as long as you're willing to come along with us on the ride, we've got some great thematic, exciting, just amazing stuff to show you. What, what's your favorite? It's very tough to tell me to tell you what is my my favorite one because there's so many incredible ones. I know I use that word a lot, but trust me. You will use that word also when you see them. Uh, we have a dragon. I think you've probably seen that already. And it's the most beautiful dragon ever in my eyes and in many other people's eyes. Uh, not only do we have the dragon in this expansion, but we have all the rules to play him. 
he can fly, he can do many things, you will see that. Uh, so this is probably one expansion I really look forward to. But then uh, there's also uh, a very exciting expansion, uh, which is, and I'm not going to say too much about it, but I, I know it's extremely, it's incredible, it's Apocalypse. So this will come, but we won't say too much about it. And what is your favorite expansion, Jake? It's, it's, uh, it's tricky to decide, like you say. Um, I think the, the things I like about the expansions isn't particularly one or the other. It's the fact that they all make the game different. They all change the way the game plays. They're not just more pretty models. They really mess with the, the basics so that you go, if you play a siege game, if you get the castle expansion, mm -hmm. which isn't just the castle, it's the, the castle, it's the rules for siege warfare, it's the rules for, it's, the, it's all the miniatures for siege engines and trebuchet and bombards to, to build the castle and then knock it down again. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a full set, but it's a different spin on the game. It adds not just more miniatures to play the same game again with different things, but it's a different way of playing the game. So it really adds to the replayability. It really adds to the, the whole kind of scope of what Joan of Arc is. There are a lot of cool things in Joan of Arc, but what makes it stand out for you? Well, as you say, there are lots of cool stuff. I think one of the things, as a designer, I think one of the things that particularly stands out as an interesting set of different choices, of different things you have to think about during the game, and, and something that impacts the whole way you play, but is a very simple rule, is that when you activate units, as you in every game you activate things to make them do stuff on the board, to move, to fight, you activate an area on the board. You don't just activate a unit. So normally you activate a unit and that unit moves once and then when it's finished it's, uh, that unit can't do anything else. This time you activate a, an area, everybody in that area can move or fight or pray or ask questions to people or explore or search or whatever, the many things that they can do. But then if they've moved out of an area, each area can only be activated once. If they happen to move out of it, then that unit can be activated again. And if they move out of the area with that activation, they can activate again. Now, combine this with the modular board made up of hexagons, some of which have one area, some of which have two, some of which have three, and the way in which you set the board up and the positions of your objectives and where your troops start and so on, and then you activate areas, not units, this makes an enormous difference to the way you think about how the game works and how you can plan what you can do. You can, with your, your resource of activation, cubes you can activate a number of different areas but which ones you never have enough and it's that i think activating areas not units makes a massive difference to the way the game plays and makes it very different from most other games out there so that was my first one what about you leo well there's something with this game that makes it stand out for me of course it's joan of arc we know we'll have battles and even mass battles with knights and stuff but it's not the only way the only thing this game provides in this game you will have some kind of adventure role-playing game feelings and how is that well in this game you can talk to people you can meet them you can you can ask them questions and you can choose how you will ask these questions and depending on your choices something different will happen so this is very uh, very narrative uh, there are some other aspects uh, of role-playing games like uh, you can enter the buildings then you will see there's someone in or not and you can search this building maybe you will find clues that will help you for the scenario so uh, everything has an importance and it's uh, it's so much more immersive that, than a lot of war games uh, that, you know, in this uh, kind of uh, universe. Jake, is there another point that makes the game different to you? I think you missed a bit. I think when we're talking about the, the things we can do that's not just a normal war game, leveling up, a classic, a classic... Uh, role play game thing. We have heroes, some of which have two levels, some of which have three, some of which only have one. But during the game, you can earn experience and spend it on various different things, including leveling up your heroes. So, again, another little 
very simple, not a full-blown rebel game by any stretch of the imagination, but just a little hint of that kind of story narrative, narrative sort of sort of feel. But anyway, my point, <laughs> my point was about the scope of the whole game. We've gone for what we're calling legendary scale, which means that the, the individual humans are smaller than you may be used to. But the reason we've done that isn't because we don't like the big figures. It's, we love the big figures, but we really love the really big figures, like the dragon. And they're even more impressive if the humans they're standing next to are half the size. So that's one reason. We, but we've got this thing. It, it gives you this immense scope on the same side. We, we all have we all have a normal kitchen table we play on. We can't suddenly make that three times as big to have a huge, amazing battle with castles and dragons and stuff. We can't make that table bigger, but we can make the miniatures smaller. And by making the miniatures smaller into this legendary scale, we can put 200 miniatures in the in the box. We can give you a village to fight around. We can sell you a whole proper sized castle and a dragon that is hundreds of feet high. I'm not allowed to mention that guy who's five stories high, am I? No, okay, I won't mention him. But this... <laughs> This gives you a, a, a who, it's like being a, a bird watching a battle or watching the Inquisitor seek through the village for the werewolf or just having this kind of hawk's eye view of the, the, the French medieval countryside as this history unfolds. It's just really exciting. And I love this scope that we're able to get purely because we've changed the scale and that great breadth of. I'm rambling now, I'm going to stop. I like that bit. <laughs>